and if you're playing other people's music particularly people that you admire or look up to or who have inspired you 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 become them don't you you, you yeah you're, you're sort of looking at yourself an out-of-body experience but you're them yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's and that's definitely a great place to uh, to start learning from especially if you want to perform yeah i remember it was, it was a really big step for me to start performing so i have played in bands and i've also had to teach myself how to speak on camera right look at the camera and okay. treat that like a person yeah yeah, yeah. that's it's a skill and yeah. it, like any other and um there was definitely a couple of things that i did for that when it when i was sort of in my first band and at the first band I ever joined just sort of made at school I was the keyboard player okay because uh, my mate who sang and played guitar thought he could get me involved and thought it'd be really good for me to play keyboards and I'm like oh, I'll join your band yeah. I'm secretly I'm like I don't want to be the keyboard I want to be the yeah. guitarist that's yeah. not cool <laughs> I want to be the guitarist I want, to, I want his job yeah but I was like yeah I'll join your band because yeah. no other band to join yeah. when what I went the do? school I was in yeah um and we built up, um, you know, enough songs to say, okay, we might need to play some guitar on these. So I'm like, great, and I, I think I should play guitar on on all of these. <laughs> you know, just trying to get away yeah, yeah. away from the uncool keyboard player, I guess. <laughs> but uh, in in hindsight, it's so much fun to to do both and to to be a keyboard player or a pianist. Yeah. But guitar has got that that coolness yeah. factor, hasn't it? Definitely. And it was actually the the singer then did the lead singer thing and left, and. Um, <laughs> I was sort of we were just still jamming at weekends um, you know 15, 16 year olds mm. and auditioning people that would answer the classified ads in the back of the newspaper oh, wow. no internet back yeah. then yeah yeah um, and the people that would come through would just be like why, why has he come here we're like he's like 30 and we're 16 it seemed like he was from another planet you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. and then we just get other people come and we're like no this isn't working so I was like let me sing just so we can rehearse yeah just and, and, and we'll see how it goes yeah and then after a month of doing that it was like we could gig this yeah I know I'm not the best singer in the world yeah but yeah. we can gig in a pub with this yeah and um but yeah that's the, I was I've pretty much been the singer in every band I've been in ever since yeah that happens so often. I see it with bands that come here because lineups, particularly with new bands, that it takes it can take for, you know forever. I've had bands that practice once a week, the same time every week, and it takes them six months to get a lineup sorted. Mm -hmm. You know to get the right member, and more often than not, somebody will stand in because they need to rehearse the, the full set or whatever. But they don't have a singer or they don't have a bassist. Some, somebody will pick up the bass, or somebody will go to sing, and they realise that you know. You practice for six months and you'll be good at anything. Yeah, hundred so percent. The, the best basis. people to be in the band are the people that are stood next to you, yeah, yeah. wanting to do it, yeah. rather than you know wanting to put an advert out either online or in a newspaper, you know, advertising for Kurt Cobain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And um, but but I was very aware, certainly when the you know the dream was always like being a band or, or be some kind of artist or something but I was always aware from being very young that I'm not the guy whose name would be on the ticket I wouldn't be the the front person okay. as it were um or a, at least that was that was what I always imagined imagined at the time I always saw myself as that sort of secondary person who was involved heavily in kind of the recording and and uh you know a tour with the band and, and co-write but it was always kind of, to be honest, just from because of the time when I was getting into music. Like the biggest thing was Robbie Williams, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, that's what a front man looks like." Oh, yeah. I don't look like that. <laughs> but I look like that guy next to him, Guy yeah. Chambers. Okay. And then you get the CD and you go, "It says by Robbie Williams and Guy Chambers." So I'm like, "Every so who is this guy? Yeah. Don't know what he looks like, but looks like he's he's earning a living here." And and <laughs> yeah. that was that was always my role. So so okay. through like teenage years, through university and college and all that. Just kind of keep my eye out for a, a frontman kind of guy, yeah. and um, yeah, never to be honest, never really spotted one, and always had to come to that role myself. Yeah, um, but I did kind of miss one as well. All right. um, so I went to Barnsley College. Um, when would that have been? Around two thousand and three, um, with Alex Turner okay. from the Arctic yep. Monkeys, <laughs> and um, yeah. of course, I'm from South Yorkshire. I lived in Sheffield for a year. Everyone who lives in that neck of the woods, and especially if they're my age, say, "Oh yeah, I knew Alex Turner," yeah. or his mum's friends with my mum. Everyone's got a story. Yeah. But I did have three music tech lessons a week with yeah. the guy for yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah. 
we were friends, we weren't particularly close, but, you know, I got to know, I never spotted yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And two yeah. years later, when I'm two years into my music degree, thinking I'm doing all the right things to progress or, or, or to get better or to possibly even have a career in music, and then the Arctic Monkeys go and do that, and I'm yeah. like, oh, wow. <laughs> did, did see that one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that quiet lad in the, cast who, in the class who wouldn't say boo to a goose. <laughs> I never, I never saw that. And was he, was he pushing himself forward as that anyway at that time? Um, what he, what they would, it was him and Matt Helders, the drummer, did the degree that I did. Right. And I know that they were just starting. They, they'd formed the band, but it was a case of, you know, Matt needed to learn drums to be a drummer, like you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lad called Andy. I can't remember his second name. He was the bass player pretty much had to learn bass to, to okay. be, it's exactly how you say it, but they're a group of friends. Yeah. But I do know that they were, they were incredibly well connected with, and best friends with all the musicians in Sheffield. Okay. And there was a real, there was a real scene <laughs> brewing that went on to become that indie 2005 that was big in Sheffield and, and yeah. big in other places. Okay. So, sorry, sorry, uh, you're, you're in a band that, that whole time, are you? You're, you're doing your own thing or? A, a succession of kind of small different bands. Um, original stuff definitely peaked while I was working at the Lead Mill. Right. Um, I was in a band that was in Barnsley actually. <laughs> we, we were playing sort of my songs because they needed a singer and they, they were a band that needed someone to come in and do that role basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, we can do it with my songs if you want, we, but we never really co written. Um, yeah, that that it, uh, we didn't really feel part of that scene as well. I, to be honest, I'm I'm a real classic rock person at heart. Okay, a real classic rock person like ACDC. I'm going to download festival on on Sunday. Passed it on the uh, way here. Actually, uh, right. <laughs> glad I'm not there today. It's yeah. Shocking, it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I'm going to see Aerosmith basically. Oh, well, and me and my girlfriend were like, Aerosmith are playing. It's it is their farewell tour. Yeah, they might do another one, but we're like, we're it's going. Not for worth that. the risk, is it? Yeah. But I'm no Steve Tyler. So yeah. the songs I really want to do are those sort of rock songs, yeah, and I yeah. can't do it. So um, that's the music that really connects with me the most, okay. um, as well as you know acoustic and, and general pop songs as well. Some of that comes from having a. I've got an older sister, right? So God bless her. She got me into all the stock aching Waterman yeah, <laughs> of yeah. the early nineties when yeah. I was growing up. You yeah. know, I didn't listen to the radio. I used to listen to the tapes that she left okay. when yeah. she went. You know, when she went out. <laughs> What's my sister listening to? Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, there, there is that sort of pop song mentality, but there's nothing more fun than the, the classic rock stuff, I guess.